Good luck and enjoy. Championship, and I have to say, the last six races have been won by the man starting in pole position. The car's coming around the final corner to line up on the grid. It is just gone five o'clock here in Abu Dhabi. The sun still in the sky at the moment, but it's making its way down towards the horizon in the desert. And then eventually it'll end up being night. The floodlights will come on around the circuit. The Grand Prix will last round about an hour and a half without any interruptions. But we've had plenty of interruptions over the course of this year. What drama is going to unfold here in the final race of 2021? We'll keep you up to date with the football that kicks off in an, in an hour or so. We've got live commentary later on this afternoon. But now it's the winner takes all race between Verstappen and Hamilton. Hamilton's on pole. Verstappen is on pole. Hamilton is second. And Hamilton gets a brilliant start. And Lewis Hamilton takes the lead of the race. Unbelievable start from Hamilton. And he's into first place. Verstappen is down to second. Perez is up into third because Lando Norris has run wide. But Hamilton has got the best start. Hamilton has taken the lead. And Hamilton is in the position to win the world championship. But we're only on the first lap. A long, long way to go. But that is an absolutely perfect getaway for the Mercedes driver. They swing through the left hand and now at turn five. Verstappen will try and drag up behind the back of Lewis Hamilton. And Hamilton starts weaving. Yes, he gave that back. Towards the chicane. How aggressive is Verstappen going to be? He sends it. He sends it. And he's through. And Verstappen is back in front. Hamilton has to cut the corner. Who's going to come out in front of the two of them? It is Hamilton. Hamilton emerges in front, but he cut the chicane. And immediately on lap one, the stewards have got something to look at. It was always going to happen, wasn't it? End of the long straight. Yes, he gave that back. Verstappen saying he has to give that back. And I feel like Hamilton is backing off to get back towards Verstappen. Or is he just trying to be close enough to Verstappen to say he didn't gain an advantage? Hamilton leads Verstappen second, Perez third. I think unlike last week, Verstappen kept it on the track just to complete the move. I think this time Hamilton may well have to give it back. It was a lunge from Verstappen, but it was an inevitable lunge as he slipstreamed up behind the Mercedes into that turn six braking area. Lewis left the inside open. He tried to cover it a little bit late. And Lewis is in the lead. Hamilton saying Verstappen pushed me off the track. Can you believe it's happened immediately on lap one? We'll need a replay, but I think that might have been a legitimate move for Max. He just about kept it on the track. And in that case, Lewis kept the position by running wide. Stewards are straight into this, aren't they? It was a brilliant start from, from Hamilton on the medium tyres. The one thing I said before the start, Verstappen needs to lead at the end of lap one. And Hamilton got the start, got the jump, even though he was on the theoretically less grippy tyres. Verstappen came back at him. And as it stands, Hamilton retains the lead by crossing the, uh, the chicane. But I'm not sure if that was a, a legitimate way to hold the position. The rest of the top ten behind, behind Hamilton and Verstappen is Perez third, Sainz fourth, Norris fifth. Leclerc, Sonoda, Bottas, Ocon and Ricardo the top 10. Alonso, Gasly, Giovinazzi, Stroll, Vettel the top 15. Latifi, uh, Raikkonen, Schumacher and Russell the 19 drivers. Verstappen sent it in from a long, long way away. And Verstappen kept it on the track. And that's the crucial thing. In Jeddah, he didn't keep it on the track. He ran wide. Therefore, it's not a legitimate pass. The same in Brazil. It wasn't a legitimate pass, but he got away with it. Here... I think it's a great move. I think it's a really good move. On the first lap, you never know how deep you can go on the brakes. You don't want to lock up and get it all wrong. But he kept it on the track. Oh. Looked good. No investigation necessary between Hamilton and Verstappen. The stewards say no investigation necessary with that overtake. So Hamilton has the lead after Verstappen just overtook him at, the first, uh, uh, at that chicane. That's a very strange decision. That's a harsh one, I think, for Max. I think that's a really harsh one. He, he sent it. It was a lunge, sure. It was a lunge, but he got the car stopped and made the, made the corner. It's a pass on track. If the guy on the outside is just going to cut the corner at that point, you, you're never going to pass him. So he came from a fair way back. That's, that's uh, maybe what the FIA are thinking. Go ahead, Jonathan. So I've just seen it again. Max is ahead at the apex. Jonathan is on the track. Jonathan, he's forced him out there. That's why we asked him to give back Lewis all of the advantage. Lewis has left the track, and oh, you told him to give back all the advantage. All the advantage was already given back prior to the first lap ending. Oh, I'm not sure we agree, but understood. No problems. So the FIA are saying that 
Verstappen forced Hamilton off the circuit, so he had to cut the corner, and then he backed off so that Verstappen was back behind him, but not ahead of him, and that that is fair, but... I see where the FIA are coming from on that one because Hamilton has been forced off the road when Verstappen has made the move. But but equally, it was a decent move from Verstappen. Oh, I don't know. Okay, mate, so just get your head down. No investigation on the shortcuts or the advantages that he's gained. Okay, mate, so just get your head down. No investigation on the shortcuts or the advantages that he's gained in terms of gaps. So let's just get on with this and win it on track, mate. That is incredible. What are they doing there? Gone right off the track himself in an out of control manner, then fine. But he managed to keep it on the track. I think it's a good old old school lunge and, and Lewis cut the corner. Fine. Yes, maybe he was he was forced wide there, but there was a car lunging it in on the inside that managed to keep the keep the it on the track. I think that that's sort of a, a decent move from uh, from Verstappen. The FIA obviously disagree. They think Hamilton had nowhere to go and uh, and it's and it's play on. But it's obviously worked very nicely in, in Hamilton's favour. That 4 of 58. Lewis Hamilton leads the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix and as it stands will win the World Championship. He's 1.6 seconds ahead of Max Verstappen in second place. Third is Sergio Perez. Fourth is Carlos Sainz. Fifth is Lando Norris. And safety car window is open. I'm just saying, it's our normal first pit struggle, so we've got to get off this tire as soon as we can. It's terrible. Latifi, Schumacher, and Russell, the 19 drivers. Verstappen got the worst start on the grid. Hamilton's reaction time was so much better than uh, Verstappen's. As the lights went out, Lewis just jumped away from his start box much quicker and then got the acceleration and went through it as well. We get another shot of that overtake. I like it. I think it's a nice move. I think it's oh, good, old-school, yeah. aggressive driving. He, he's gone for it, but he's kept it on the track legitimately. I think it looks like a nice move. That's what that's racing what, used to be. That's what an overtake is. That That's just an overtake from Verstappen. I mean, Hamilton has had to get out of it and get out of the way, but, but Verstappen's made the move stick. I think really Lewis hard. was coming across in the braking zone a little bit as well, moving from the outside towards the inside. 28-7 for Hamilton, 29-0 for Max. Typically losing just a little bit, turn one to Max. Looks okay for me, but my opinion doesn't matter. It didn't look okay for the uh, for the FIA. Michael Massey waving play on, and Hamilton leads now by two seconds. Lap 5 of 58, Hamilton leading Verstappen second. That's the former Renault F1 driver, Jolian Palmer, alongside me, Jack Nichols. Down in the pit lane is Jenny Gow. Yeah, just looking at strategy, of course, the two drivers at the front of the field started on different tyres. Max Verstappen on the softest tyre. Now, he'll want to get to around lap 15, if he can, before he comes into pit. On the medium tyre, you want to get to at least lap 19. But the longer you can go at this stage on either tyre, it means the better it'll be for you as the cars come past and the fans stand up and wave their flags. Um, yet yeah, you want to make it as deep into this race as you can before you switch on to the hard tyre, which is what we're expecting almost everybody to do. Lap 6 of 58 at the moment. Hamilton's... I'm hurting my tyres a lot. I'm to keep him behind. Copy that. How's your status? Zero. Copy. He has DRS still. The campaign to the advantage of the Red Bulls here is that Verstappen is second and Perez is third. Perez is relatively staying with the top two at the moment. So they have a sort of potential pincer ability with Lewis Hamilton. If the Red Bulls can do something different with Sergio Perez to either get him ahead of Hamilton or leave him out when Hamilton pits, or they do have options with the other Mercedes, Valtteri Bottas, in his final race for the team, down in eighth spot. Yeah, Bottas didn't have a good start on his medium tyres from sixth on the grid. So it is Hamilton out front from the two Red Bulls. There's a big gap now appearing between Perez in third and Carlos Sainz in the Ferrari in fourth. That's already over five seconds. But what Red Bull need is bigger gaps to form so they can think about pitting and, uh, and, and trying to undercut Hamilton's Mercedes at some point. At the moment, Hamilton, he's on the medium tyres. It's maybe the better tyre as uh, with, with the more we go into the race. It should degrade less, be better at the end of the stint. So this is the time, really, where Red Bull needs to be putting the hammer down.
The two Aston Martins are squabbling over 14th place. Vettel almost into the back of Lance Stroll, coming into the chicane at 6th and 7th. But Hamilton leads 2.1 seconds ahead of Verstappen in second position. Perez in third, five seconds back. Go ahead. We still don't understand it. That was a hard, aggressive pass by Max, but Max stayed fully on the track and he was ahead at the apex. He did everything right, stayed on the track. And at that some point, the second car has to back out. Jonathan, the stewards have reviewed it and determined that all of the lasting advantage was gained, A, and that Max forced that position there. So they've said that they have reviewed it but are not investigating it. That's Jonathan Wheatley, who's the, the sporting director at, at Red Bull, not the team. We can push more on the front tyres now, push more on the fronts. The race director. And oh, Daniel Ricciardo earned a reputation from doing those moves in the Red Bull car in recent years. He earned a reputation for being last at the break, late breakers, sending a lunge, smoke it in, sometimes all locked up, but keeping it on the track. And it was the skill of the driver there to do that, to be able to brake so late and not just run straight off the track. And that's where Max has, has come unstuck in recent races. In Saudi, he did it a couple of times just going off the track. And one of the times was forcing Lewis with him. In Brazil, he went miles off track and forced Lewis with him. And it was contentious. And in Brazil, it was allowed. In Saudi, it wasn't. In my opinion, neither of them should have been allowed because he didn't stay on the track. This time, he's gone in super deep. It's an aggressive attempt. But he has kept it on the track. And that's the critical part. That's how you make an overtake. That's the thing I can't get my head around. That is how you make an overtake. If you, if this is our target to extend. You're doing a good job. Point. What's the point? So it's a tough one for the stewards because Hamilton kind of had to back out of it. But Max was clean down the inside at that point. Lewis could have covered the inside to stop him going there. He didn't. He left the door open. You knew as the slipstream was, was coming, Verstappen was gathering momentum. He was going to go for it. He was always going to go for it on the soft tyres. He had to be leading end of lap one, and he went for it. But he got it stopped, and I think it, I think it was OK. Hamilton maybe had to back out or seek the position. Christian Horner said that he's a, a little bit shocked. He didn't see Lewis give the advantage back and a, a total lack of consistency. Which, uh, <laughs> well lap 8 of 58 we'll see what happens in the remainder of this Grand Prix but that is certainly going to be a topic 2.3 seconds Hamilton ahead of Verstappen now 2.4 seconds so Hamilton is going quicker uh, we are started struggling a little bit there are four men sitting around a table with all the telemetry with all the details with screens in front of them this weekend, they are Gary Connolly. He's been in charge of the last three races as far as stewards are concerned. Felix Holter, Derek Warwick, who was on BBC, Radio Bre uh, BBC Breakfast this morning talking to me, and Mohamed Alhamza. Uh, and they were saying that the last thing they wanted to do was have to get involved with a stewarding decision that could change the face of this race. But by not getting involved, not wanting to investigate or not feeling the need to, have they unintentionally got involved with the course of this race? Well, undoubtedly, uh, lap 9 of 58, Hamilton's lead 2.4 seconds still over Verstappen. Verstappen saying the rear tyres are starting to struggle a little bit as he tries to keep pace with Hamilton. He's on the soft tyre, Hamilton on the medium, so in theory, the Mercedes will be able to go longer on this set of tyres. Just see if he can get some toe back. It's very helpful to have the toe close it up a bit. Yeah, I'll try. It's all on Red Bull to try and get ahead of Hamilton somehow if they want Verstappen to win the championship. The tables turned very quickly, didn't yeah. they? It was going to be Hamilton has 58 laps to try and pass Verstappen. He did it in about, what, 50 metres down to turn one. Then the contentious moment, halfway around the first lap at turn six, Verstappen lunged it in. Hamilton kept the place by going off track. And now we are getting through the laps. We're on lap eight of a 58 lap Grand Prix. And now Verstappen, if he wants to be champion, has to try and find a way past Lewis Hamilton to, to win the race at this point. 2.7 seconds is the gap, but Verstappen's also on the soft tyre. It's the, the less preferable tyre at this point because he had the lock-up in, in qualifying, struggling a little bit with the, the rears overheating now. That is the nature of a soft tyre compared to a, a medium tyre, which is just a little... Yeah, tyre temps are stabilising now. Uh, when you can, can you update your dry switch, please?
58 here on BBC Radio 5 Live. Uh, Lewis Hamilton leads the Grand Prix. Verstappen second. Perez third. Sainz fourth. Norris fifth. Sixth for Charles Leclerc. Seventh Yuki Tsunoda. Eighth Valtteri Bottas. Ninth Esteban Ocon. And Daniel Ricciardo completes the top ten. As Hamilton now makes his way down towards turn nine. Into the long left-hander. And then Verstappen will follow him through just a couple of seconds later as he tries to stick with Hamilton. Now they're starting to open up the gap in which Hamilton can make a pit stop and come out, or Verstappen can make a pit stop and come out in clear air ahead of Carlos Sainz, who's running in fourth position at the moment. That 10 of 58, though, and it's just going to be very interesting to see what happens now strategically. Can Do, do Red Bull need to try and undercut Hamilton here, come into the pits, put on fresher tyres and take advantage of that and get ahead of the Mercedes when it pits or is, is that not possible from this point what's what is the what is the game plan now how can they use Sergio Perez to do something Perez is seven seconds away from Hamilton it's equidistant Hamilton three and a half seconds ahead of Verstappen at the lead of the race then Verstappen three and a half seconds ahead of Perez who's still there and he's on the same tires as his teammate the two Red Bulls are on the soft can they use Perez to do a, a big undercut and force Hamilton to pit very early the undercut is going to be the way to go because they can't really do anything else on those soft tyres. They're going to give up before Hamilton's mediums, but they can't pit yet to go for an undercut because they don't have the gap and they'll come out into traffic of everyone else who hasn't pitted. No one in the field, the 19 drivers, no one's pitted yet. Indeed, lap 11 and 58. Just, we're getting more replays of that, of that incident. I can see where the stewards are coming from. I can see where it's not dissimilar to sort of. These are great laps, Lewis. Just keep it up. Just keep the pressure on. Time from Austri uh, from Rosberg. He just sort of didn't turn in the corner and ran him straight. These are great laps, Lewis. Just keep it up. Just keep the pressure on. Pete Bonington telling Hamilton these are great laps, and now the gap is up to 4.3 seconds on this lap. So that's impressive stuff from Lewis Hamilton. He sets the fastest lap of the Grand Prix. We'll have uh, second half commentary from uh, Leicester later on and we can get the team news now with Colin McNamara. Thank you. That was actually Colin's brother, Connor, on that one. So uh, we can uh, also get uh, team news from Mike Minick. Oh, red eyes are really struggling. Okay, understood, mate. Thank you, Mike. And an update on the Rangers game. Roddy for side. Thank you very much, Roddy. Lap 12 of 58 here on Five Live. This is the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, and Lewis Hamilton took the lead off the line. Verstappen tried to get back at him, overtook him, coming down into the chicane at turn six and seven. Forced his way through. Hamilton cut the corner to stay ahead, and the stewards have decided that is okay. Verstappen is now really struggling with his tyres, I think, on that last. Yuki, we Yuki, we are rear left limited, so watch we spin and we can push in the high speed, push in the high speed. It was a second, the, the, uh, the previous lap. It's the soft tyres that, that are giving up now. Maybe a bit of frustration under the helmet for Max, who feels hard done by, absolutely, by that lap one cool. That's in the past now, that's not going to change. Five and a half seconds, Hamilton just stretching away on the preferred strategy. The game plan that Red Bull had and Verstappen, it had to rely on Max keeping the lead at the start because these soft tyres were going to make him vulnerable through the race. If you then lose the, the, the track position at the start, it was going to be big trouble. And that's basically where Red Bull find themselves in now. It looks at this point like they need some sort of external intervention because they're just dropping back at a fast rate. 
they still can't really pit because they're going to fall into traffic. Maybe they'll have to soon because it's just dropping away quicker than... Sebastian, when you're ready, can I have a just aero balance check? Uh, it's pretty okay. The wind is still making a difference. Yeah, copy that, copy. Continue to happen. So Lando Norris started third on the grid after a superb qualifying. He's dropped back down to fifth position. But the team saying we are losing gears now. Verstappen comes into the pits. Max Verstappen pits from second place. The soft tyres will be coming off, Jenny Gow. Yeah, so he swings into his pit box. 22 people lift the car up just a couple of inches. He puts on a brand new set of hard tyres, flashes past me, and out the red ball of Max Verstappen goes. 2.1 seconds for Verstappen. He's going to come out in a bit of traffic here. So this is an interesting move from Red Bull to pit him this early. He might just get out in front of... No, no, he's not. He's coming out in an absolute nightmare of traffic here. OK, Lewis, so box, box. Sorry, I think, of uh, Charles Leclerc. So Charles Leclerc was coming through. He had to take evasive action as Verstappen exited the pit lane before the two collided. Now Verstappen is a second behind Norris. He's then got four seconds to Carlos Sainz. So Verstappen emerges in fifth place. That's a really early move for Red Bull. Verstappen now gets past Norris quite quickly, but it's not perfect, that. Well, he's got a bit of clear air now. He's actually cleared Norris very quickly. He's up into fourth. Carlos Sainz is ahead four seconds. OK, Lewis, so box, box. And so Hamilton is just going to cover off Verstappen here. Hamilton, in the lead of the Grand Prix, is going to pit to cover off Verstappen. Now I guess they'll le then leave Sergio Perez out for a bit. Exactly. Can Perez do something? That's going to leave him in the lead of the race. Hamilton comes in, mediums to hards. It's a good stop for Mercedes. 2.4 seconds, that's plenty enough to keep him ahead. Give me feedback on tyres and balance when you can. Balance is a bit all over the place. Bit of understeer, high speed. Bit of understeer, low speed. Tyres feel like eight overall, though. Right, and then ahead of Verstappen, but he's got a red bell ahead of him. So Lewis Hamilton rejoins the racetrack now. He's in second place, but all that matters for him is that he is ahead of Max Verstappen, who has pitted and is in fourth position. Carlos Sainz is in between them and has yet to pit. Now they're going to be on similarly aged tyres as well so this is this will be Verstappen's opportunity on same tyres to uh, try and close in oh Leclerc I thought he was sort of taking evasive action to get out of the way but he was losing it through the right hander of turn three he had a huge oversteer it's a very fast corner you go over a small crest flat up through two then through a, a long arcing right hander of turn three and he had an oversteer as Verstappen was coming out of the pits and he just shot off the uh, the background of our screen Help is struggling with those guys at the rears. Copy understood. He's immediately got it back again. They're having a bit of a tussle still. Yeah, Sonoda's trying to get back past him to the outside. Hamilton's pitted. Plan A. Correction. Plan B. Plan B. So Perez being told to do plan B, which is presumably stay out there. Sonoda has got back ahead of Leclerc, and Leclerc is now under pressure from Valtteri Bottas. There's just a tenth of a second between them as they come down into the tight right-hander of turn 12. Lap 16 of 58, the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, final race of the season, here on BBC Radio 5 Live. Jody Park. So Hamilton and Verstappen, they're the only two in the field to have pitted, along with 19th and, and last place driver Mick Schumacher. They've got a long way to go on these hard tyres. Can Sergio Perez hold Hamilton back? There's 10 seconds now between the race leader, the Mexican Sergio Perez in the Red Bull, who hasn't pitted, and Lewis Hamilton, who is in the net lead of the race because he... Plan B. Plan B. Hamilton at 10.4 seconds. Let's do a job now for his teammate. Just get his elbows out and uh, make life hard for Hamilton. If... Hamilton or when Hamilton catches him because that can bring Verstappen back into this fight now the the strategy is negated of the soft and medium tyre offset from the start they're now both on the hard tyres and it maybe brings into play a sort of last ditch, op ditch option of a second stop as well for Verstappen because those hards have got a long way to go to get to the end of uh, 58 laps 
think it's also fair to say at this point that both teams are probably willing to sacrifice a little bit of performance from their second drivers. So Sergio Perez for Red Bull, Valtteri Bottas for Mercedes. Yes, the Constructors' Championship is still up for grabs, but their main concern is to try and beat the other team's main driver. So whatever Perez and Bottas need to do, they will. So when you get the arrest from Snod, you're going to have 25 kilometers advantage. It's faster than him. The gap is down to 8.6 seconds now between Perez in the lead, who hasn't pitted, and Hamilton in second, who has. If he's two seconds a lap quicker, by the time he catches him, Perez will have no chance to try and fight him. Could be very difficult. Oh. Verstappen's had a big slide, took a bit too much of the uh, apex of the penultimate corner, turn 15, which sent him wide. He's trying to pass Carlos Sainz now for third position, but he's with that mistake, he might have to wait another lap. Comes out of turn five and uh, it just about gets the DRS to attack the Ferrari. So just about within the one second, and now he can look to, uh, to take that third place back. But a bit of a moment there for Max. The sound you can hear is Verstappen onto the brakes, down through the gears, into the tight, slow, left-hander at turn six, a little right-hander at turn seven, and then on the power again, up through the gears and up to 200 miles an hour to try and overtake the Spaniard Carlos Sainz, who's in third place in the Ferrari. I think we should try to luck out with the safety car so I don't know. When we come to the pitch, can we free down? Okay, copy. Five for uh, Sainz, a 27-8 for Hamilton. Well, Sainz is on those soft tyres, the same as Verstappen was, and the yeah. same that Perez is. So if Sainz can hold Verstappen back a little bit, then Perez can maybe hold Hamilton back a little bit. But right now, it's costing Verstappen quite a lot. Hamilton comes through and does the fastest lap of the race, 2.2 seconds quicker than Sergio Perez. And as Sainz and Verstappen flash past, Verstappen's lost a second and a half on this lap alone to Lewis Hamilton. The gap now is eight seconds between the two. And it's only six seconds between Perez and Hamilton in the sort of battle in inverted commas for first position, but Perez has yet to pit. Lando Norris comes into the pit lane for McLaren. He puts on a set of hard tyres and rejoins the fray. Verstappen is pretty close this time to the back of Carlos Sainz as they come out of the left. Launch map, launch map, launch map. Minor, default 06 again, default 06 again. Ace, Verstappen closing in, Sainz covers the inside but knows he's got no answer to Verstappen who's on the brakes, through the left, through the right and on his way. Perez leads, yet to stop. Hamilton second, five seconds back and then it's eight seconds now from Hamilton in second to Verstappen in third and uh, although Sainz is coming back at Verstappen here looks to the outside but I think he's not going to be too fussed about getting involved in that fight that is, his race isn't with Verstappen and he'll just cost himself time Carlos Sainz yeah Sainz on those soft tyres now that have done 18 laps in the Grand Prix plus some in qualifying so he's going to be looking for a pit stop probably quite soon a lot of the other midfielders have now pitted as well Lando Norris came in and Charles Leclerc came in and they were having a, a little tussle just behind Sainz. So that might be the cue for Sainz to make a pit stop to cover his track position. But it doesn't matter now because Verstappen is through. And can... Don't care about too much butters, really. Copy, let's push, let's push. 3.2 seconds the gap. They signed him for this year, Sergio Perez. They've retained him for next year. Can he do anything to help his teammate out? It's going to be really tricky on these soft tyres. He's losing a huge amount of pace on them. Almost three seconds on that last lap. It's a 1 minute 30.588 for Sergio Perez, unless potentially he is sort of uh, conserving the tyres at the moment, so he has something to fight Lewis Hamilton with when Hamilton arrives. Lap 19 of 58. Ricardo now pits from uh, 11th, 10th position, and he is going to emerge behind his teammate Lando Norris. But Perez leads with Hamilton closing in and we haven't had a look yet at Verstappen's pace in clear air because he overtook Carlos Sainz on that last lap. So we'll see what he does this time around. Lap 19 of 58. Hamilton almost right on the back of Perez. I repeat, it wasn't clear. I repeat. I think I am close to the, close to the cliff. Okay, that's good. We are ready. Perez is on 21 lap old soft tyres. Lewis Hamilton is on five lap old hard tyres. This should be straightforward for Hamilton, shouldn't it? Should be. It's a tense moment, though. This is where the race can go wrong. Trying to pass for position.
the, uh, the teammate of your main rival, but Perez has got no pace. This is going to be, I think, straightforward with the DRS. -er. Down towards turn five, they come. Hamilton sends it in deep, swings through the left-hander. He's going to get the DRS on the next straight. And Sergio Perez, who is in front of Hamilton at the moment, but he's not going to have any answer, I don't think, for the British driver. Hamilton opens the DRS, goes to the inside, gets side-by-side -side with Perez. Perez sends the switch back late in the day up the inside into turn six, and he holds the plate. Okay, back him up, back him up. And gets a really good drive out of turn six and seven, Lewis Hamilton, and takes the lead of the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. But Perez is going to have the DRS this time as they now run down towards turn nine. Perez goes to the inside. They might have a bit of contact there almost, and Perez is back in front. Brilliant defensive driving from the Mexican. He holds the lead of the race, but Hamilton has just got so much more grip and traction. It's going to be a matter of time, surely, but that's wonderful stuff from Perez. It's exquisite defensive driving. Okay, back him up, back him up. Back him up now is the message to Perez, and he's defending at every possible corner. This is really great stuff from Sergio Perez in his first year with Red Bull. I think he's purposely slowing down around the hotel section in the final sector because Hamilton is going to struggle to find a way around there. He might hear, though. Hamilton to the outside, coming down into turn one. Perez covers the inside. He's late on the brakes. Hamilton then gets the cutback coming out of turn one. They're going to go side by side in towards two. He's now less than three seconds behind them. Hamilton saying Perez is driving dangerously. Thought about sending it into turn five, Lewis Hamilton, but he wasn't quite close enough. Surely this time he's going to get the move made as they come down the straight towards the chicane. Hamilton to the outside, and Verstappen is right with them. Is Perez going to send it on a lunge again, coming down into turn six and seven? Perez to the outside, late on the brakes, but Hamilton finally gets the job done because Perez, though, will have DRS on the next run, but all of this means that Max Verstappen is less than two seconds behind Hamilton now. Hamilton leads the Grand Prix, but Verstappen is coming right with him. Perez surely this time will move over, let his teammate through. Absolutely exceptional work okay, from Perez. Back back up, back up. Back the Unbelievable. That's driver of the season from Perez. That was marvellous. That's teamwork. It's Happy to reduce the saving. Giovinazzi within 2.6. Absolutely backing off. Oh, Checo is a legend. <laughs> Absolute animal. Verstappen saying Checo, which is Sergio Perez's nickname, is a legend. He has just driven a wonderful lap and a half on short, soft tyres, throwing everything at it to keep Hamilton at bay. Hamilton. He just couldn't afford to get in that mix there. He couldn't afford to stick a nose in on a Red Bull driver that was just going to do everything he could to throw him off. Perez just backed off around the hotel section. Hamilton was crawling all over him, nearly around the outside through a corner I've never seen an overtake on in uh, turn 13 around the hotel. Perez was so slow on that lap, five seconds off, <laughs> because he was just A, fighting, and B, trying to back Hamilton up. But hey, Hamilton's done that himself back in 2016. He was trying to back up Nico Rosberg for the championship. That's what happens when you get down to these, uh, these final races. And Perez... This person, Lance is boxed. Use everything now, use everything. Seconds ahead of Max Verstappen. They come across the line now. It's now up to 1.9 seconds because this is going to be the ultimate question. Is over the course of the season, Mercedes in general have had a quicker car in the race as an overall rule of thumb. Is that going to be the case here? Verstappen is back to within two seconds of Hamilton, that 22 of 58. But if Hamilton and Mercedes are just quicker for the remainder of the Grand Prix, then Verstappen is not going to have an answer. But they are absolutely neck and neck on this lap so far, albeit Hamilton maybe just nibbling away a couple of tenths, extending his advantage. Yuki Tsunoda is third, he's yet to stop. Fifth is Valtteri uh, Bottas, sorry, fourth is Valtteri Bottas. Fifth is Sergio Perez. And then it is Alonso Gasly, the other drivers who have yet to pit. This is lap 23 of 58, the final Grand Prix of the season in Abu Dhabi on BBC Radio 5 Live. Jerry and Palmer, myself, Jack Nick. And we lose positions. Negative. Opposite me in the pit lane, we thought it was more, but actually with that beautiful dueling, the Hamilton fans made their voices heard. Perez, beautiful driving. There is a Mexican section here tonight and they were jumping around. But what a great battle between Hamilton and Perez once again. 
Hamilton's looking strong on pace, though, isn't he? He's, he's uh, OK, we're, we're sort of in the early stages of this second half of the Grand Prix, not quite into the second half yet, but Hamilton looks pretty comfortable. Yeah, he's just done a, a, another lap, three tenths quicker than Verstappen, but that was Verstappen's best lap of the race so far. The top two, back into the top two positions. Perez pitted immediately after his heroics, after his job was done, came in for the new tyres that he desperately needed. And uh, he's now dropped a fifth behind Valtteri Bottas and Yuki Tsunoda, the Alpha Tauri driver, still out there in third, who hasn't stopped. And Bottas just can't get past Yuki Tsunoda. So we're going to the end. We're looking what we can do to help Max. So consider plan A for now. Consider plan A for now. Let's push on. So in this final weekend, Hamilton sets the fastest lap of the Grand Prix. 2.5 seconds ahead now of Max Verstappen. So we're going to the end. We're looking what we can do to help Max. So consider plan A for now. Consider plan A for now. Let's push on. So Perez being told we are uh, we're going to the end. Uh, Bottas gets ahead of Sonoda because Sonoda pits. Hamilton leads. Verstappen second. Both have made a pit stop. Bottas in third has yet to stop, but is not involved in the fight at all because he's 20 seconds back. Perez is fourth in the Red Bull. So, what happens now, Jody Pump? Just a bit of a flat-out race at the front. Hamilton with the fastest lap on the last. Half a second quicker than Verstappen. He looks like he's got really good pace in the Mercedes. It's not a huge surprise. Their race pace has been strong particularly the second half. Lap, lap time, more than the cup, please. Yeah, understood, 29.4. But that's led us to the uh, to the crucial incident, particularly last time out in, uh, in Saudi. This time Hamilton has track position. If he keeps the pace up, what can Red Bull do? Hamilton could probably get to the end on the hard tyres, even if they maybe will start to struggle slightly more at the end. It's not a high degradation circuit like we've seen at, uh, at some others, Bahrain or Barcelona's at the start of the year. This one, the hard tyre should be fairly durable and should go the distance. So Red Bull have got to rely on a bit of pace. And I'm not quite sure when there's talking to, to Sergio Perez now in fourth with Sonoda's pit stop, saying we're looking at how we can help Max anymore. Don't know how it's going to happen. He's 28 seconds off the leader. Don't think the leader's going to be pitting. Perez might have just done, he's done a cracking job. A really good job for the team, but with Hamilton coming through, I think it might just be. Gap at point nine. Bad upshifts. Every upshift very bad. He so desperately needs a safety car or something to just come into the mix to shake things up. But I tell you, I had a briefing with one of the engineers ahead of this race, and the safety car probability, they said, was low. It's the first time for seven races that he said they had a low probability of a safety car, but that or a miracle, is I think what Max needs. Certainly looking that way at the moment, lap 25 of 58, Lewis Hamilton continues to lead the Grand Prix, 2.7 seconds ahead of Max Verstappen in second, Valtteri Bottas is third but has yet to pit, Perez is fourth, has pitted, Alonso is fifth, hasn't pitted, sixth is Gasly who's yet to pit, and then we have the rest of the pitters, Sainz, Norris, Leclerc, Sonoda, Ocon, Ricardo, the 12 drivers at the front of the order. Let's get an update from Roddy for side. Roddy. Thank you, Roddy. We'll keep you updated with the football that's kicking off uh, in about 20 minutes' time, and then we'll have second half commentary here on Five Live Sport this afternoon. Lewis Hamilton is leading the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, though at the moment he is 2.9 seconds now ahead of Lewis Hamilton in second place there's a yellow flag out there so maybe I think it's Kimi Raikkonen at turn six so Kimi Raikkonen is in a bit of trouble at turn six we'll see whether he's able to get going again Michael it's a bit dangerous can you warn them but, uh, so far they're racing Toto hard racing so that was Toto Wolf complaining that uh the, 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 it was the, the, the Perez defending was a bit too hard. Raikkonen has stopped at turn six. This could be a safety car situation. Something broke. Oh. I don't know what's happened. Okay, it's not I, have, uh, I don't know what happened. Okay, can't, can't see anything so far. Keep going.
Like when I try to break down into five and then exit, I had like really weird. Okay, stop by. Stop by. Keep going. Now it feels okay. Okay, we stay out, we stay out. A bit of a safety car. Yeah, the brakes failed. Oh, no. The brakes failed, says Kimi Raikkonen, in his last ever Formula One Grand Prix. And that might be him Him out of it. We're just about to get a replay of it. He's coming down towards turn six, hits the brakes, and it doesn't stop. And uh, locks the rears, sends it into a spin. And in the end, a little nudge with the barrier, but could have been a lot worse than that. Yep. Lost drive. Yep. Came over. He's about to come to a premature end. He's back in the pits now. It's just a tap with the uh, the barrier, quite a long way off. Uh, uh, rarely that you ever see someone find the barrier down at turn six, but obviously a brake failure would mean that you cannot stop from a very high speed, around 200 miles per hour there. George Russell is cruising as well in his last race for Williams. He's just gone straight on at turn six and seven. Lost drive. Yeah. Came over. And he's got an engine problem and is going to be out of the Grand Prix. But again, that's not the sort of thing that'll cause a safety car. Hamilton's lead now up to 3.7 seconds over Max Verstappen. He was six tenths of a second faster on that last lap. He is in control of this one at the moment. He's got the pace. He's got the pace. He's got the track position. So things are looking good for, uh, for Lewis at this stage. But we're not even halfway. We're not even halfway. And he's got the Red Bull still in the mirrors. Three and a half seconds. Verstappen's not out of this. But he needs something to happen to just give him a bit more of an edge. A safety car would do it because I think he's got a, a free pit stop behind. Valtteri Bottas is 20 seconds away from Verstappen. And under safety car conditions, that would mean Max can pit, put on a new set of tyres and keep the same position. And of course, Lewis, if he pits under safety car conditions, would lose the lead of the race to Max. So that's the sort of thing that can make a difference. And in this 2021 season, it's the sort of thing that's been happening to throw the races up. You can never take things at face value face value right now would say Hamilton's looking very good lap 28 of 58 Hamilton's lead 3.8 seconds over Max Verstappen in second position then it's 24 seconds to Valtteri Bottas in third Kimi Raikkonen jumps out of his Formula 1 car for the final time great career Kimi Raikkonen great character world champion in 2007 with Ferrari incredibly exciting in the early 2000s with Sauber and then subsequently in particular with McLaren and it's a long way for this time. Yeah, copy. Been in Formula One 20 years and uh, out on lap 27 with a brake failure. Didn't Jensen Button have a retirement in uh, 2016? It was a similar thing. Russell also looks like he's heading into retirement. But Jensen Button's 16 year career in Formula One was, was cut short in Abu Dhabi. Reliability is so good these days, but. A couple of a uh, couple of major retirements. And David David Coulthard's last race was fairly innocuous as well. Wiped out on the opening lap in Brazil in two thousand and something eight seven. It's a long way for this tire. Copy. So Hamilton's saying it's a long way for these tires to last. They pitted, obviously, fairly early on because they were involved in their own little battle. Jenny, is that is is that a fair concern for Hamilton? I think it is a long way for it to go, but I don't think it's a fair concern. Yeah, the brake. Oh, no. I don't know. Can you try to reverse? Okay, yep. So, when we change the switch, there was the issue or it just failed? I think it was independent, but let me check. Yeah, it was for something else. And watch for Perez. Okay, give me box box. So we if change. there's cars coming. Yeah, we change front wing and nose and we try again. Four seconds to well yep. Yeah, but the brakes are well. is in, in. So, one more lap, everything you got. All Red Bull have left because on race pace here, 
Hamilton has just done another fastest lap and he's stretching the lead again by over four tenths of a second. Race base, Red Bull don't have it. And track position, they don't have it either. It's looking good for, for Hamilton. So as it stands, Hamilton will win the World Championship. It's Valtteri Bottas' radio running in third place, 1.7 seconds ahead of Sergio Perez, but Bottas is still yet to pit. And so when he does, he'll come out Quite a long way down the order, I think, Valtteri Bottas. So, well, still behind Yuki Tsunoda, and everybody might be outside of the top ten almost, Valtteri Bottas. So I'm not quite sure why um, he's sort of continuing to fall backwards. Well, he's going to have a good tyre for the end of the race. True. Whilst we're talking about maybe Hamilton and Verstappen struggling at the end, it's the same for a lot of the midfielders that pitted early. Lando Norris, Charles Leclerc pitted similar time, and uh, Bottas, by going very long on the medium tyre... Ricardo last lap 29-2, Esteban did it 29-5. Is he on traffic? Uh, negative, they're both not in traffic. They both have at least four, four, four second gaps. And if anything goes wrong with, with Hamilton's car, Red Bull are in for a 1-2 and it'll be a huge turn up. So Mercedes still need to concentrate on, on Bottas, maximising what they can. He'll be 10th if he pits, but there's two drivers that haven't pitted yet behind as well. Alonso 5th and Gasly 6th who would uh, need to come in, presumably, at a similar time. Jenny. Yeah, just listening across to some of the radio talk at Red Bull, and they've asked Max if he wants any different things from his front wing till the end of the race. That's going to be a chance for his second pit stop, potentially, that they're lining up. Bottas comes in, finally does his pit stop in the Mercedes. Off he goes again on the hard tyres under these lights that are now shining down. Darkness descends here in Abu Dhabi, but yeah, sounds like Red Bull. You're going for saving more the fronts. Go, gra go gradually, gradually saving more the fronts. In the Grand Prix, 4.2 seconds he's back from Hamilton. So if he does pit, then Hamilton could just cover him off on the next lap, provided the Mercedes team do another decent pit stop. And they've done many of them this season. They've just done one on uh, Valtteri Bottas' car, who emerges in ninth place, in fact, just ahead of Yuki Tsunoda. But it's another area. It's not just the drivers today that are the, facing the pressure. Everyone on the, uh, in, the, in the pit crew, the strategists on the pit wall, there's a lot of it. And Red Bull throwing the dice, they might just sort of create an element of unknown for, for those on the Mercedes pit wall or the Mercedes pit crew. Charles Leclerc is just locked up, coming into turn six and seven, and that may allow Valtteri Bottas through into eighth place. Bottas, as Jolian said, ahead of Yuki Tsunoda, which is a move for position that, is, that have changed hands. Here comes Bottas trying to get Leclerc. Into I mean, the car is much better now than at the beginning of the race. Maybe the extra air, air balance is helping. Yeah, copy. They're planning an extra turn as well for the next compound. Verstappen second, Perez third, Alonso fourth has yet to pit, Gasly fifth has yet to pit, and it's Sainz, Norris, Leclerc, Bottas, Sonoda, the top ten here on BBC Radio 5 Live, the season finale, the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, and Hamilton is looking set to win the championship at the moment. It's the definition of a two-horse race now. Hamilton and Verstappen five seconds apart. Sergio Perez back into third with the pit stops, but he's 25 seconds down on his teammate. So there's a big gap between the top two and the rest, as there has been all season long. It's been a story of just two drivers. The winner takes all. And right now, Hamilton has just got the pace in the Mercedes. And all the chatter was the benefit of the soft tyres for Verstappen to start on was going to be he can get a good start and then just defend for all he's, all he's got for 58 laps. But that start, we can talk about the, uh, the, the moment and the overtake that never was at turn six the start there's max has got to be ruining a little bit of that as well because on the better tires that was the moment may where maybe this got away because with hamilton now in front he's just got the pace to stay there hasn't had very good starts overall max verstappen recently is that fair to say he got bottas in brazil but that's sort of saudi arabia i think he was poor on every start wasn't he mexico he took the lead brazil he took the lead but saudi and qatar he had a monstrous start didn't he uh, yeah, after his grip penalty but it has just been this, uh, the last couple of races. And Lewis, if we were to stop under safety car, would you prefer medium or hard? Both times felt good. There's not guys. Two. And 
Lewis, if we were to stop under safety car, would you prefer medium or hard? Both tyres felt good. This one does too. In case there's a safety car, we've had a couple of retirements, Raikkonen and Russell, but they both managed to get round to the pits. If one of them didn't, they might call a safety car, which would bunch up the pack. So then there's pressure on the Mercedes and, and Red Bull strategists to decide if they pit or not. That's one of the elements taken out. Ask the driver what tyres he wants if you do pit. And uh, Lewis isn't too bothered either way. He's happy on the hard, so maybe they'll stick with that. It's been the last two races that Verstappen has had poor starts, and it's been really crucial in all of them, really. In Saudi, there were, what, three race starts, all of which were not great for, uh, for Max. He got away with it with just pure aggression. But this one, he couldn't really get away with at the start, but he had that chance to come back, didn't he, at six? That 34 of 58. You are doing a good job, really good job. Bring you the second half here on Five Live. Burnley versus West Ham also underway uh, at two, and we'll keep you updated with that. And it's full time at Tynecastle. Roddy for side. Very much Roddy Lewis Hamilton leading the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Yeah, doing a good job, really good job. Charles Leclerc being told he's doing a really good job to keep Valtteri Bottas behind him, which is uh, pretty accurate, really. Leclerc running in eighth place, still Alonso and Gasly in fourth and fifth, yet to stop. Hamilton is about to set another fastest lap of the Grand Prix, this time a 27.2, two tenths quicker than he had previously managed. And here comes Bottas now, he's going to get Leclerc this time. To the inside coming into the left right at six and seven the claire will have the drs down the next straight but bottas has just got so much better traction coming out of that chicane he breezes away and i would be surprised if leclerc is able to get back at him coming down into turn nine he's not so that move is made for bottas up into eighth place hamilton on that last lap another half a second the gap is up to 5.5 seconds hamilton ahead of Verstappen and in position to win the championship and we are past the halfway mark in the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix that's the benefit of fresher tyres then for Bottas a faster car as well his teammates marching away with the uh, the race and currently the championship as it stands and Bottas there making a move on Charles Leclerc for eighth position pitted a lot later and uh, just had the tyres really Leclerc trying to come back at him but just no rear grip and that's so crucial when you're trying to put the foot down to uh to get the traction and get the run on the... Uh, I mean, they not to stop. There's no way you beat these two guys in front of me. No shifting. And No gears. Or, well, he was told not to shift. He's and pulling off. Gears. So, virtual safety car chart. Almost certain virtual safety car. Maybe a real safety car. We'll wait and see. Antonio Giovinazzi pulls over to the side of the circuit. The other Alfa Romeo. Raikkonen already out of the Grand Prix. Giovinazzi's last race in Formula One and he is at the side of the track it will be of I'm sure a virtual safety car it's whether anyone takes advantage of that Hamilton and Verstappen have just come past the pit lane now so it might not work out for either of them to uh, to make a pit stop he's parked in a decent place Giovinazzi just in front of a uh, an area they could push the car behind the barriers but at the moment the marshals aren't going out there to recover it as soon as they do and they get the all clear to then we'll get probably a virtual safety car for that one, I think. He is in a fairly precarious... He is sort of right on the exit of the, of the race. So staying out, staying out. It's the virtual safety car then. So everybody has to slow down to a basically a, a speed limit fundamentally. And Hamilton and Verstappen are still 5.5 seconds apart. If you're Verstappen, do you pit this time anyway? Just to, just because if, if it's still happening when you're coming past the pit lane? Yeah, I think you've got to go for it now. You uh, you have a it's reduced a long pit way. stop cost. It's quite a long way for the teams to pit the cars back. Leclerc comes in. And my apologies, I spoke over Pete Bonington there, so I didn't catch what he said to Hamilton. As they come around the final couple of corners, Hamilton can't pit because he's going to lose the track position, and that's what he just doesn't want to do. So I don't think Hamilton can pit, but he's such a bold call to call him in. 
Verstappen can pit and still emerge in second place. Stay out was the message to Hamilton. And Red Bull are coming out. So Verstappen, as he comes into the... Box and pit confirm, please, Max. Box, pit confirm. Box, pit confirm. So Verstappen pits from second position. A new set of tyres for him to try and attack Hamilton with Jenny. Yeah, so he flashes into his pit box. They're going to do a little tweak to his front wing as well. Slightly slower than the last one, but he's back out on a new set of the hard tyres. This is an all-or-nothing risk move from Red Bull. So Verstappen is going to emerge now from the pit lane. He'll have, he'll have had a cheaper pit stop than Hamilton. We'll give you the gaps between them when the virtual safety car comes in because by dint of the fact that they're going slower, the gaps are bigger than they actually are in real life. Perez comes into the pit lane now as well. So this is a big opportunity for Red Bull. It's exactly what they needed to try and get back into this championship fight. It depends how long the virtual safety car is still deployed for because now Hamilton, if it's still virtual safety car, Hamilton can also pit. Michael, please, no safety car. When you say margin on brakes, you want warm up? Or yeah, you can warm the brakes. You can warm the brakes. But I want the delta close to zero. Now coming down towards turn nine, we'll get a... That is where Giovinazzi is off the circuit at the moment and it depends when the virtual safety car is ending because if it... If it, if it ends in the next, I would suggest, approximately 30 seconds, then Hamilton won't be able to make his pit stop under the virtual safety car. Here he comes now. He's coming through the right-hander of 12 and 13. And there's still... We haven't seen a... We haven't had a look at where Giovinazzi's car is. Here he comes... But even if Hamilton comes into the pits and then the virtual safety car ends, that is difficult timing. And... Giovinazzi's car is going away now, so they could go racing again any moment. What is the decision from Mercedes? Hamilton through the final corner. Virtual safety car is ending, and Hamilton stays out. No gap to Verstappen now, 17. The Vettel two in front, hard, two laps newer than yours. Hamilton 3.6 behind. He is the leader, 23 lap old hard. Blue, blue flag for Hamilton. Hamilton asking, are we going to be in trouble? Racing gets back underway, lap 38 of 58. Hamilton leads the Grand Prix on basically 25 lap old hard tyres. Max Verstappen has a brand new set of tyres on his Red Bull and he is going to be chasing Hamilton down now. The gap is 17 seconds between them with 20 laps to go. A second a lap, that's your window you're looking for. What was the answer, Bono? Yeah. Are they going to be in trouble? It cut off. Hamilton's had better pace the whole way through. 38 laps, two of which, or a lap and a half of which, was under virtual safety car. That's allowed Verstappen the pit stop. He's just underneath 17 seconds away now. And uh, without that, he'd have been about 26 seconds away. So that's helped Max take the second stop and not lose quite as much time as he otherwise would have done. And now... Okay, there's that gap at 17.0 for Verstappen. He will need eight tenths a lap on us to catch. So we just need to keep that in mind. Okay, there's that gap at 17.0 for Verstappen. He will need eight tenths a lap on us to catch. So we just need to keep that in mind. Feels like a lot on a Mercedes that's very quick. But what is the, the benefit of the new hard tyre? And how much did Hamilton take out of his hard tyres by building that gap? Those are the questions. Those are the questions that we now wait for the answer to. Across the line comes Verstappen. He does the fastest lap of the Grand Prix. It's a 1 minute 16.3. The gap is now down to 16.3 seconds. Sorry, it's a 1 minute 26.3. And the gap is now down to 16.3 seconds. So that was fast-ish from Verstappen, but not absolutely outrageous. And Hamilton is now pushing on these tyres and uh, is very, very quick in the first. Uh, yeah, the potential to lose track position, Lewis, too high. Uh, yeah, the potential to lose track position, Lewis, too high. I, well, Hamilton thinks it was a risk to leave him out. I think if, if Hamilton emerges with fresher tyres behind Verstappen with a faster car, but you, you'd think that would be doable. But then you have to overtake Verstappen again, and that is the, is the thing you want to avoid. Yeah, you want to do that, really? Put yourself behind Max Verstappen <laughs> with... 19 or 20 laps to go to win the title. I think Mercedes have called this right. I think Red Bull have called it right. They've done the only things that were sensible. If Hamilton had pitted the second lap, 
it would have been touch and go. And I think because the virtual safety car ended at the crucial time, Definitely. I think he would have come out behind. So Mercedes called that right. They couldn't take the gamble of covering the next lap, Verstappen. That's meant that Verstappen's on these fresher tyres and Hamilton isn't. But if Hamilton pitted... Yeah, he tried to push me off. I was in front, in the corner breaking, so it should be okay. Copy. In the corner breaking, so it should be okay. Copy. It's Fernando Alonso complaining about uh, some action with Yuki Tsunoda. I'm not sure Tsunoda's done a lot wrong there, as uh, Alonso went off and cut the corner and went on his way. Alonso firing it in out of control. If that's the, the move that uh, Alonso's complaining about, then absolutely nothing to see here. But we're getting another replay now of Sonoda into Turn 9. Is this the part that, uh, that Fernando's complaining about? I'm not sure. Alonso trying to make a, a, a bit of a hairy move up the inside of Sonoda's Alpha Tauri at Turn 12. From a bit far back, out of control, big oversteer, went wide. Absolutely no complaints there. It was a bit of a Verstappen move from Brazil or, uh, or Saudi Arabia. That one for Fernando Alonso. Leicester versus Newcastle is underway on five... Still 19 laps to go. 19. Okay, that last lap was 7 tenths. Lewis's tyres 26 laps old. Only 19 laps to go in this Grand Prix. Hamilton saying, I won't be able to keep this pace up for the whole rest of the race. And Pete Bonington, his engineer, is saying, yeah, point taken. But Verstappen won't be able to keep his pace up that he's doing now for the rest of the Grand Prix as well. They're both be on a dead curve, i.e. both cars suffering with, uh, with degradation and therefore getting slower. Verstappen eight tenths quicker this time around as he comes through. The lap before he did the fastest lap of the race, which was basically seven tenths quicker than Hamilton. So he's there or thereabouts with the, the seven or eight tenths that he'd need per lap. But he, then, he needs to do that and then pass Hamilton at this rate. The gap is now 14 and a half seconds. Hamilton's tyres are, are older. He's going to be further into the dead curve. But with all this pushing that Verstappen's doing, basically, Pete Bonington's saying, Posted on lap times of people around. Yeah, copy that. Last lap, Lance 28.9. That 41 and 58, Jenny Gow. It just goes to show, doesn't it, that you can have the best drivers in the world, but it's not just reliant on their driving skills. This comes down to a little bit of luck with a virtual safety car, maybe. This comes down to the team calling strategy. This is a team game, even though it's one driver who will walk off with this championship at the end of it. Well, who will it be, Hamilton or Verstappen? We're no clearer and no nearer to knowing. Well, it's Verstappen in the box seat at the moment, lap 41 of 58. He's 14.7 seconds ahead of Verstappen in second place, and the gap isn't coming down dramatically. Perez is third. Fourth is Carlos Sainz. Fifth is Lando Norris. Sixth is Valtteri Bottas, who's trying to pass Norris four fifth position then it's Yuki Tsunoda in seventh place Alonso is in eighth position but not for very long because Pierre Gasly a flat spot now. copy we will monitor yeah. Vettel Stroll Schumacher uh, and Latifi the 16 drivers still running Leclerc has made two pit stops that's why he's down in 12th position Alonso trying to fight back with Gasly but not close enough to get him into turn nine Hamilton leading the gap to four to gap to Verstappen now 14.3 seconds. So it it's not coming down by I would suggest anywhere near enough realistically. Four tenths on the last lap that Verstappen took out of Hamilton, but Lewis did his personal best lap of the race so far. So the tyres are hanging on for the moment. They are durable, the hard tyres here. The degradation is not particularly high, so he should be able to go to the end on them. And Verstappen doesn't seem to be extracting a huge amount more pace on his fresher tyres so it's still looking at the moment like it's it's Hamilton's to lose but you never know the more you use the tyres the more the vibration levels are okay Lance as well which is going to be something that Mercedes could get worried about towards the end of the race Hamilton pretty much matches his best lap of the race so far a 1 minute 26.7 Verstappen is coming through the final right hander now of turn 16 and out across the line and he cuts the timing beam to only go three tenths of a second quicker. The Mercedes of Hamilton is looking so strong up at the front. Will his tyres last if he continues to push them? That's going to be the question. But we are on lap 43 of 58. So only 15 laps to go or so in this Grand Prix, which has gone by quite quickly. 
considering not a huge amount has, has happened since that opening lap drama, it's, uh, it's rattling away, and we've probably only got 20 minutes or so remaining of this one. Hamilton leading, 14 seconds ahead of Verstappen in second place, but there's just not enough pace coming from Verstappen. But curiously, he's not even sort of setting personal bests the whole time. No, he he's on the fastest lap of the race. What you are doing is very good for tyres. We can, uh, you can stay there slightly, improving your pace as you are doing. You are doing a really good job. Vettel and Stroll in the Aston Martins. The gut came down a little bit more on those laps, but like it, like it was earlier on, really, the Mercedes is able to just keep the pace. He was quicker on the uh, the same tyres. Now Verstappen's on the fresher tyres. He's slightly quicker, but it's not enough to make up for a, the extra pit stop that he's taken. So Hamilton comes over the line now, past our commentary position, and down towards Turn 1, and then through will come to Aston Martins, Vettel ahead of Stroll, and then here now into the final corner comes Max Verstappen, and he goes across the line now. So that is the difference between them. That is 14 seconds, and on that last lap, it was another two tenths that the gap came down by. It's nowhere near quick enough for Max Verstappen if he wants to win this championship. Valtteri Bottas is right behind Lando Norris. That's the sound you can hear. Okay, Nicky. We're happy to stop any Lyco for a few laps. We can stop any Lyco. It's not going to change anything. We get closer. Please follow instruction, Nicky. Follow yeah, instruction. Yeah, I will. I will. True. Is that just a bit telling your driver these things, clutching at straws? Because Perez is just watching it on the on the telly yeah. around the uh, around the circuit. He's he's not in contention anymore, Sergio Perez. He's 41 seconds behind Lewis Hamilton. So if Hamilton were, were to pick for whatever reason, he's still not going to be close to uh, Perez. Perez won't even see him. But uh, just being kept in the loop for uh, for whatever reason, there the driver in a comfortable third. And we've got a group of four cars ahead who are battling. That's Hamilton being warned. You might be about to lose a bit of time here because there's Alonso, Ocon, Ricardo, and Leclerc all in a queue and fighting over that very precious. Just be careful with deployment down to turn nine. Hamilton to get past. How difficult is it to let the, the leader pass when you're in that fight, or is it quite straightforward? Well, you've got to get out of the way when the blue flags fly at your earliest convenience, basically, which is the earliest sensible straight so there's not a lot of choice but when you are racing with each other particularly when you're going for a move you are looking ahead as well as thinking about getting out of the way so it's, it's more complicated and fundamentally it's just four cars all in a very tight space that are racing each other four points here so it's going to be tougher for Hamilton it's not what he wants to hear at this stage you just want a nice clear run use the pace of the Mercedes car and, and it'll be fine but it's going to be a little bit more complicated because there's four cars all battling and Leclerc's trying to pass Ricardo. Leclerc in the Ferrari took a second pit stop. He's trying to make up for, uh, for that, currently out of the points. And he's got DRS on Ricardo as well. So he's just looking ahead and thinking ahead. Ferrari team have got to get on the radio for him and, and say... Which axle, please, in turn nine? Front right. I'm having a chat with one of the engineers about these tyres and saying saying can Hamilton's tyres last and I have to say they're saying yes they can they could have gone all the way to the end of the race if they wanted them to that's the thing I, and th there was no real trouble going to the end Verstappen had to roll the dice because there was no point not should they have been going onto a medium tyre or, or something like that or that makes no difference either well, Hamilton said it didn't really make a difference and he was happy on the hards. The hard tyre can last, but you can push on them. The mediums might drop off. Leclerc pitted for, uh, for a medium, but isn't making big inroads either, given, uh, given a, a few positions away and not able to get them back, the Ferrari driver. I think it was just a, a shot at nothing, really, for Verstappen. They don't have the pace. This, this race at the moment has got away from them because of that first lap. This lock came out of nowhere. took pole but it all came down to nothing because of that start that Lewis made again poor off the line from uh, from Verstappen then the big contentious moment that will be spoken about later with Verstappen lunging it back on Hamilton Hamilton keeping the place by cutting the corner was he forced off 
or was it a legitimate move from, from Verstappen? That's the debate. And that is the critical moment of this race because as soon as Hamilton got through, he's just had the better pace in race conditions as he's had for a long time, actually, in the second part of this season. Leicester versus Newcastle is underway. Let's check in with Andy Giddings. Burnley West Ham at Turf Moor. Mike Mine. Hamilton, meanwhile, is clearing the back markers here in the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Lap 47 of 58. And Alonso and Ocon are the next for Hamilton to clear. He's not losing a huge amount of time, though, there either, is he? Everything is going well for Hamilton so far. 13.2 seconds ahead of Verstappen. And even clearing Ricardo and Leclerc, he hasn't really lost much time. Verstappen's had to clear Stroll and Vettel as well. The two Aston Martins, finally. But... He's just not quick enough, Max. And he is going to need something to go wrong for Lewis at this stage to bring Red Bull back into play. Their car is not competitive enough in race trim. And Hamilton, even on the more used tyres, isn't struggling. It says I've got eight laps on my dash. Is this the maximum deployment that I can have? Down to six and nine? Dash on the steering wheel is saying he's got eight laps to go, but actually he's got 11 could be it could be laps remaining i had that on my dash you can sort of choose what goes on there it could be a fuel thing where he's he's this dash is telling him that uh, that he's in, in trouble with fuel consumption which daniel ricardo had a couple of races ago and it was an erroneous message but hamilton raising the, the concern whatever it is and the team just saying ignore it distractions that you don't need still as easy as it looks for Hamilton at this stage, the tension's there, the pressure's there. We've had three retirements from this race, none of which were driver error. The cars are at the end of their, their life as well. Going to be museum pieces at the end of this race. New Formula One cars for next year, new generation of car for next year. And all the mileage that's been done, the engines, the gearboxes, a load of... That's 11 laps remaining, Max, including this one it is it's the the back end teams that have broken down so far the two alfa romeos and, and the williams of george russell 11 remaining gap to the staff 12.3 how's it Chloe? i'm down to 12 already it's just that back mark of traffic lewis he's gonna have to get through it too but how's it come down to 12 or 12 is not a worrying number i don't think if you're if you're lewis hamilton um 1.2 seconds a lap yeah. is what Max has got to do. It was 0.8 seconds per lap. Hamilton sweeps around the uh, second Alpine then of Fernando Alonso, running in ninth place, and he's cleared the four back markers that have cost him a little bit of time. He lost uh, nine tenths to Verstappen that time around. So Verstappen was going through his own couple of back markers before, then managed to get one clear lap in as Hamilton was in a little bit more traffic. Cost Hamilton a second. The gap is now 11 seconds. But... Another lap is ticked Possibly a slow puncture for Norris. Possibly a slow puncture for Norris. Position still, and he's bailing out of this one as well, Valtteri Bottas. It's been an underwhelming drive when uh, you compare it to Sergio Perez's, for example, in the other Red Bull earlier on today. But Hamilton leading, Verstappen second, Perez is third, Sainz is fourth, Norris is fifth, Bottas sixth, Sonoda, Gasly, Alonso and Ocon are the rest of the top 10. 10 laps to go now, 11 seconds, the gap between Hamilton and Verstappen. It's still looking good. Into the pits comes Ricardo. Norris. Possibly a slow puncture for Norris. Possibly a slow puncture for Norris. And he's got a slow puncture, Lando Norris. Now, he had one in Qatar a couple of races ago, and uh, he pitted, and then everybody else got actual punctures. OK, well, that'll make everyone sit up a little bit more. And we've seen Norris with a front left puncture, so just be careful on the curbs. Then being hit by, by curbs, there's a, a lot of sort of flatter curbs, but then over them they were sharp-toothed, more protruding edges that were cutting the tyres. 
and we've seen Norris with a front left puncture, so just be careful on the curves. Pete Bonington is trying to give this news in the cheeriest way possible, isn't he? Oh, um, Norris has a uh, Norris has a puncture, but you know, it's all right. Hamilton has the furthest to go in this race now. Norris had a puncture in, in Qatar earlier than, than most. He was actually having a really good drive there, and that releases Valtteri Bottas finally into fifth. But it's the first warning sign of, of things not being all right with the tyres. There were three punctures, in, um, or four if you include Lando's slow puncture as well in Qatar, all from tyres trying to extend as long as possible. Okay, mate, the problem is fixed now. Overtake available, eight laps to go. Let's give it hell. So basically the final two corners are on the circuit. Uh, Hamilton being told that that's where the, the punches might be coming from. Right-handers, quick right-hander of, uh, of 15, slightly slower of 16. And the outside curves then with the, the left front with a lot of load on it. The outside front taking the load of a Formula One car then bouncing over the curb slightly maybe leaving it prone to damage and a worn tyre as well just has a little bit less protection a little bit less rubber there and, and is more prone to damage than uh, than others I think it's worth bearing in mind that Norris pitted on lap 18 from the soft onto a hard tyre Hamilton came in three laps before that 15 it was lap 15 they're currently on lap 51 that is a long way to go with these tyres and every single lap now is going to be Heart in mouth stuff for the whole of the Mercedes team, for Lewis Hamilton himself, and for all the fans. They believe that puncture was an uh, outside curve between 15 and 16. For info, be mindful. Last lap, they did identical lap time. Sergio Perez in third was quicker than Verstappen. Okay, Perez's tyres are a little fresher, but Verstappen doesn't really have an answer to Hamilton. And Verstappen now is catching all those back markers. Leclerc, yeah. Ricardo, Ocon, Alonso, and then Norris, who's pitted and has just passed Fernando Alonso again to be back in eighth place. Verstappen's about to go through a huge amount of traffic, which is going to hold him back even more. The laps are ticking down. He doesn't have the pace to make this up. It's just whether Hamilton's tyres will cling on to the end now. Verstappen closing in on that traffic now. He turns left at turn 12 then left again at 13 underneath the bridge that takes you from the paddock to the huge hotel that's on the inside of 13 and 14 and Verstappen now into the final corner and out across the line lap 52 of 58 now so pretty to get him only on the last lap set to become without question the most successful Formula 1 driver of all time he has already has the most wins he already has the most pole positions He's tied on seven with Michael Schumacher for World Championships. He could have eight in six laps time after undoubtedly his most difficult season in Formula One. Maybe his most difficult season in his career. He's 11 and a half seconds ahead of Max Verstappen and the Dutch fans in the grandstand looking rather forlorn they were buzzing earlier on today but they've just seen the race slip away from their man let's get an update on Leicester Newcastle Andy we're happy to push in turn three if you can for tire temp Both of those games could have uh, important connotations at the bottom of the table. Burnley currently 18th, Newcastle 19th, but they're both only two points off Watford, so a win for either would bring them level on points with the Hornets. Lap 53 of 58, we'll have second half commentary from the Leicester game once we have finished here. And it's, getting, it's looking more and more finished every lap that progresses, isn't it? Hamilton was seven tenths quicker than Verstappen on that last lap. He was clearing the traffic. The traffic got out of the way relatively easily. Leclerc and Ricardo, but Verstappen is just losing time, and it's just not the charge I was, I suppose, expecting from Verstappen. Hamilton has been fully in control of this Grand Prix since the moment they dropped the clutches, really. Since the moment he. he kept on track or kept the place halfway yeah. around lap one that was the key point of this race when Hamilton kept the place oh into the wall is Nicholas Latifi 
Nicholas Latifi has hit the barriers coming out of turn 14. That is going to be a safety car. That could be the end of the Grand Prix. Lap 53 of 58. Safety car will come out and we might, goodness me, either we won't get any more racing or we will have a one or two lap sprint to the finish. Hamilton, will he pit this time for some fresh tyres? I don't think he's got the gap to pit and come out ahead of Verstappen. And Verstappen does have the gap to pit and stay ahead of Perez. This could change the championship completely. Just like the whole Formula One season so far. Every time it's settling down, it all kicks off again. And with five laps to go, Latifi's in the wall. The cars will be going slowly behind the safety car. The marshals will remove Latifi. Track I can't box. Negative. Yes, because into the pits comes the Red Bull driver now. A new set of softs going on. Track 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 box. Box. Negative. And that was a lot of swearing on the radio from Hamilton. I thought they were just playing tone, but I think it was all the beeps. And he's been picked up by the safety car, so everyone is now going to bunch up behind ah. him including Verstappen, but how quickly are they going to be able to restart this race? That's the question. There's a lot of lap cars in there that will be uh, allowed through. There's a destroyed Williams on the track as well that needs to be picked up and taken off the road. How quickly will they, will they get going? If they get going quickly, Verstappen is going to have an unbelievable shot to pass Lewis Hamilton on a very old hard tyre on a brand new soft. If the race restarts, Hamilton is in huge trouble. of the 2021 season might rest on the Abu Dhabi Marshals. Yeah, Hamilton sums it up. That is unbelievable. If the race gets going again, ah, now they have really doused Nicholas Latifi's car with, uh, with fire extinguisher. So presumably there was a bit of a smoke coming from it. And that might take a little bit longer to, uh, to get going again. Now, has Latifi had a crash all by himself? He was going around the outside of Mick Schumacher at turn uh, nine, and then they might have had a bit of contact, which maybe later has led to a puncture or something for, for Nicholas Latifi. They were battling over 15th position. Latifi was pushed off by Schumacher, and then coming into turn 14, the back end's gone. Difficult to tell if that was sort of damage related or just a spin for the Canadian. You're lucky just dropped it with oversteer. Okay, Pierre, stay out. Stay out. Stay out. Uh, why do they put so much smoke? Like, you could not even see the car. Understood. Because of the red flag here, no such case at the moment. That would seem like the... the the sensible thing to do. Well, Baku, they were more worried about tyre blowouts, weren't they? Yeah. After uh, there were many drivers on an old hard tyre, we had Stroll had a failure, then Verstappen's failure brought out the red flag. There's not a red flag yet, and the laps still tick down. What's the situation behind So, the situation is that Verstappen has pitted, he had a free pit stop, we would have lost track position to him. Four laps remaining when you cross the line. So, this bump the field has to bunch, and then they have to send lap cars through. So, it may not restart. Is he right behind me? He will be once they've sorted out all the order. This is going to take a while to sort out. With new tyres. What's the situation behind So, the situation is that Verstappen has pitted. He had a free pit stop. We would have lost track position to him. Four laps remaining are when you cross the line. So, this bump field has to bunch and then they have to send lap cars through. So, it may not restart. Is he right behind me? He will be. Once they've sorted out all the order, this is going to take a while to sort out. With new tyres. Uh, copy, Lewis. We would have lost track position if we had pitted. We're, uh, we're nowhere near the car after that. I'm so surprised they didn't red flag. Considering Baku in Azerbaijan earlier this year, it was a similar scenario. I can't remember who crashed out. It was Verstappen. Oh, it was from the Verstappen yeah. crash. Yeah, of course. Sorry. But there wasn't many laps to go. There weren't many laps to go. And they red flagged it in order to get some racing in and to get a good conclusion to the Grand Prix. And it was decided that uh, that, that was sort of the, the good best for the show. The safety car's going, it's not going. Now if we box, now we f because I'm behind the ass. 
And I can't respect the, the lap time. Gonna lose way too much. They're catching, they're gonna catch me behind. You win, yeah. you win for the championship title with two laps on the clock potentially. And the safety car going slowly is uh, is not good for Hamilton on his used hard tyres either. He's going to lose a lot of temperature from that tyre. You've got Verstappen now. He's going to be right behind him on a soft tyre. They've still got a load of lap cars in between. The lap cars, as soon as they cross the line here, I think will be allowed to overtake the safety car and, uh, and Lewis Hamilton and unlap themselves. I think we're getting a two-lap, one-lap shootout. I think we're getting a one-lap shootout, aren't we? That's the way it looks, I think. A one-lap shootout. Red Bull are coming back into the garage. They've just pitted both drivers already. And into the pits comes Perez. Perez coming into the pits then. As you say... Lapped cars may now... Oh, lapped cars will not be allowed to overtake. Lapped cars will not be allowed to overtake. So obviously some kind of problem there for the Red Bull team, but I think we're in for a one-lap sprint to decide the championship. Checo, we need to retire the car. We need to retire, retire the car. Fox. Really? Yeah, Fox. Oh. Lapped cars will not be allowed to overtake. So Hamilton will have a one-lap sprint, but there are one, two, three, four, five cars in between he and Verstappen. I can't understand that. I can't understand why. Just They just make the rules up as they go. Like, they change every time. If they could just be allowed to overtake all, a while ago already and then join the back of the pack and we'd have the top two duking it out for maybe one lap. It would, it's, it's harsh on Hamilton. But Red, I, Red I Bull cannot. Are gonna, Red Bull are going to hit the roof here, aren't they? I cannot understand the logic for the race to be restarted with five cars. Cancel that. Lap cars will not be allowed to overtake. Yeah, of course. Typical decision. It's classic. I'm not surprised. <laughs> Still racing each other for points. Norris, yeah. Alonso, Ocon. Cancel that. Lap cars will not be allowed to overtake. Yeah, of course. Typical decision. It's classic. I'm not surprised. <laughs> I just don't get it. I have to say, I thought that uh, for me, Verstappen's sort of and Red Bull's complaints about treated unfairly wasn't correct in Saudi Arabia. I feel today they've had two big calls go against them. And the safety car uh, is not coming in on this lap, so it will just be one lap. They could have already let the cars go, and that's what happens every single time. Or in Baku, they could have red flagged it. There's so many better ways this could have gone for for fairness and sport rubbish it's rubbish why when was the last time lap cars weren't able to overtake about 1999 before the rule came in or something like that it's a really bizarre one and it's harsh on hamilton if lap cars can overtake but that's what we always have yeah it's harsh on hamilton who through no fault of his own was driving a very easy race out front Christian to Michael. Yes, go ahead, Christian. Yeah, why, why, why aren't we getting these lap cars out of the way? Just give me, well, because Christian, just give me a second. Okay, my main big one is to get this uh, incident clear. You only need one racing lap. And it, I keep drawing the comparison, but Baku, they red flagged the race. They could have thrown the red flag here for 10 minutes cleared up the mess and then we have a race to the finish but they've done all the so there's two laps to go two laps I don't understand why he's not letting us through he's just pissing this thing up yeah copy the dissatisfactory unsatisfactory uh, FIA decisions really the lap ah. cars can overtake now. Oh, they can now. overtake now. And are they going to get out of the way very quick? We're about to go on to the last lap. So how quickly are they all going to get through? So it is going to happen. We're going to have the, the... The last lap is going to be Hamilton ahead of Verstappen. But is it even going to... Is, is safety cars ending? But the lap cars are there. My good. This is a mess. Another huge mess. Another huge mess. Safety car coming in this lap. It is going to be, we'll get into the rights and the wrongs and the who's and the whatnots later on. Mikey, this isn't right. 
that's Toto Wolf not happy with Michael Massey, the race director. We worried that it would all fall apart in terms of race direction. Verstappen is side by side with Hamilton. We'll get into the who's and the what's and the whatever's later, probably in the Checker Flag podcast, which will be about two hours long. But right now, we have a wheel to wheel race for the 2021 Formula One World Championship. The safety car comes in. We go racing again. Hamilton leads. Verstappen is second. There's one lap to go. Whoever wins, wins the title. If they crash, Verstappen wins the title. They come into turn one. Hamilton is just ahead of Verstappen by four tenths of a second. But Verstappen has brand new, fresh, soft tyres. Hamilton's tyres are very old, very hard, and he runs wide coming out of turn three. And he's going to have a brilliant opportunity. He sends it coming into turn five, and Verstappen takes the lead. Verstappen gets ahead of Hamilton and moves into championship winning position. He then starts weaving left to right, left to right, all the way down the straight, which is against the rules. But Hamilton is still in there, still in the toe. Looks to the outside, coming into the chicane at turn six and seven. There's one more chance for Hamilton. And that's down into turn nine. He gets on the power. Verstappen has a slide. And they're going to be slipstreaming. No, no, Mike. That was so not right. Here comes Hamilton now to the outside of Verstappen. They're coming down to turn nine. Hamilton doesn't do it. Verstappen holds the lead of the Grand Prix. And Verstappen is going to become the world champion. He's got six more corners to go. Hamilton has lost it on the final lap. He won his first world championship on the final lap of the Brazilian Grand Prix in 2008. Verstappen is going to win his first world championship on the final lap in Abu Dhabi 2021. The checker flag is there. Verstappen's the world champion. Hamilton loses it right at the end. Mercedes are going to be furious. Red Bull are going bananas on the pit wall. Christian Horner punches the air, clenches his fist, shouts at the camera. Max Verstappen closes his eyes, looks up towards the sky. The 6,000 Dutch fans are partying in the grandstand as the fireworks go off. Oh